Hey everyone, and welcome back for another demonstration. In this video, I'm going to show you how to operate the Piranha 2 by Diamond Ground Products. It's one of the newer tungsten electrode grinders that you'll find in our welding shop. And let me just be very clear at this point that it is only to be used for tungsten electrode grinding. You should not be placing any types of filler material in here for any reason whatsoever. It's a relatively small piece of equipment, but it certainly gets the job done. In size, it's a little under 8 inches in length, a little under 5 inches in width, and it's approximately 6 inches in height. It weighs about 10 pounds, and it can grind tungsten electrodes in three different diameters, 4 hundredths, 1 16th, and 3 30 seconds. It's an enclosed grinder, which means that it captures the tungsten dust during grinding operations, and you can dispose of the tungsten dust as needed. Okay, and let's transition to a side view so we can look at some of the other parts. Here we've got the guide for our tungsten electrodes, and so I'm going to slide this 332nd tungsten electrode through that top guide hole, and you'll keep guiding it in until the tungsten reaches the grinding disc. And you'll notice that there are two other size orifices that you can slide tungsten electrodes into. The middle is going to be for 1 16th diameter electrodes, and the very smallest hole, the one at the bottom, that's going to be for your 4 hundredths of an inch diameter electrodes. Okay, so let's talk about contaminated tungsten. How do we re-grind contaminated tungsten? Well, for one, you never want to just put contaminated tungsten right into a tungsten grinder uh, because that's going to leave impurities in the grinder, uh, in the grinding stone, which can then be transferred to other tungsten electrodes when other people go to grind them. But also, there's really no way to measure whether or not we've removed all the impurities off of our own tungsten electrodes during the grinding process. So, for one, let's take this example. This tungsten electrode was contaminated while welding on aluminum. One method of uh, preparing the tungsten for grinding is to remove all of the contaminated portion of the tungsten. An older method to do this was to clamp a vice grip down just before the beginning of the contaminated area of the tungsten. Uh, so clamp down your vice grips right about there and then come in from the other side with a pair of pliers or another set of vice grips and as fast as you can just give it a nice snap just break that end off of the tungsten and then go ahead and stick it in the grinder to uh, put another taper tip on there. There's one problem with that though. When snapping pieces off of our tungsten electrode that can introduce stress fractures into our tungsten once we're done snapping the pieces off and that'll later lead to further contamination and more tungsten migration um, which is also called tungsten spitting and we don't want that to be in our welds. So the Piranha 2 has some other stuff incorporated into it that can alleviate all of that. So I have here this tungsten electrode that I don't know what this person did but they they just felt like using the electrode as filler material I guess. Um, I'm going to show you the notching feature that the Piranha 2 has. So if we travel along to the side of the machine, you'll see a little slot in the side of the Piranha 2. And so what we'll actually do is we'll turn the Piranha 2 on, we'll let that grinding wheel spool up, and then we're going to insert the tungsten into that slot from the side. And that grinding disc is going to notch out some material in our tungsten electrode, which is going to allow us to break the contaminated part off without introducing stress fractures. And here you can see multiple notches in the tungsten, but you can see one that's in the middle that goes, you know, almost all the way through. I wasn't being as careful as I should have been, so whenever you're using the notching feature on the Piranha 2, make sure to pay a little bit more attention than I did. Also, notching out this much material out of the tungsten, it's going to heat up. Remember that abrasive disc is removing material, and so friction is going to create heat. And actually, the, the tip of the electrode, as I'm taking it off, it's actually quite hot. So please make sure that in order to do this, you either have pliers or you're wearing gloves. 
now that we've notched out our electrode and we've taken that contaminated portion off, it's time to blunt our tungsten electrode so that way we can put a fresh taper on it. So what we're gonna do is look at the bottom on the side of our piranha tube and we're gonna see what looks just like the tungsten guide um, up towards the top where we can slide our tungsten and sharpen it except the one on the bottom is to guide our tungsten to that grinding disc in order to blunt it. So as we insert the tungsten electrode, it's going to make contact with the grinding disc at a perpendicular angle, which is gonna allow you to flatten the tip. It's important not to just shove the electrode in there as you'll cause a groove to be worn into the disc. You wanna just let the abrasive disc do the job. Let it do the work for you. So just lightly make contact, listen for that grinding noise, and then slowly move the tungsten around in your fingertips. Uh, by sliding it around in your fingertips, this is gonna prevent a burr from being created on one side of the tungsten. And this is also gonna give you a nice, even grind. And so I'm just pulling out to check it, and I can see that we still have this, this other notch that I accidentally put into the tungsten, and we're gonna wanna get rid of that, otherwise it can interfere with our arc. So I'm just gonna leave this tungsten in there and just grind it all the way down to, and remove that notch. One final check, and it looks like I've gotten rid of that notch. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the tungsten into the upper guide, and I can go ahead and sharpen my tungsten. And so here on the left, we see this red switch that's gonna be your on and off switch. Right now it's in the off position. And then here you can see the guide in which we stick our electrodes into for grinding them. And what I'm pointing at here is how we set the angle to which we grind our electrodes. So let's take a little closer look at it, how we adjust that. So right now it's set to 30 degree angle and it can go from a zero all the way up to a 60 degree angle. As mentioned on the gauge, although Diamond Ground Products recommends going no lower than 10 degrees. So here I was just showing you how we can go back and forth and I'm resetting it to 30 degrees. So that way I can show you just how grinding an electrode works. You can think of a 30 degree angle on tungsten electrodes as an angle that's a general use. And so I'm gonna start with that, and then I'll also show you a 15 and a 45 degree angle. And so here we go, just a close up of opening up that gauge so that way we can set our angle, and then just resetting it to 30. This is just so you can get a better view of it. And when you're ready to grind, just go ahead and switch it on. Allow it a couple seconds to reach its operational speed and then slide that tungsten into the guide. Uh, be careful not to apply a lot of pressure to the tungsten electrode because doing so is gonna produce an uneven wear on the grinding disc and we don't wanna wear it out before it's actually supposed to wear out. We wanna make sure that these discs last, uh, last us a long time. So allow the machine to do the work for you and, and keep rotating that tungsten electrode in your fingers until you get that proper tapered tip. All right, and so here I'm getting ready to do a 45 degree angle grind uh, on our tungsten electrode. So I'm once again gonna open up that knob I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise and I'm gonna move that needle along the gauge until I'm at 45 and then I'm gonna lock the guide in place. So I have my tungsten here and as you can see, there is no taper on it. It's straight out of the packaging. I'm gonna turn the machine on and then I'm gonna slide the tungsten in and just constantly rotate it in my fingers until I get that 45 degree angle uh, taper on my tungsten electrode. And if you need to, you can go ahead and pull the tungsten out and just check your tip periodically until you make sure that you have the proper grind on your tungsten.
And then here's a close up of the 45 degree angle grind to our tungsten. Here we have a side by side view of one tungsten electrode that was ground down to a 30 degree angle at the tip. And the other is the one that we just did with a 45 degree angle. So if you can't tell, the one on the left is the one with the 30 degree angle and the one on the right is the one with the 45 degree angle. So you can see that the 30 degree angle has a longer taper than the 45 degree angle. And here I'm preparing to do a 15 degree grind to one of my tungsten electrodes. So again, I'm just setting that gauge to the 15 degree mark and then I'm gonna lock it in place. I'm gonna switch the machine on. And then I'm gonna place my tungsten into the guide and then sharpen my tungsten. And you can see it really doesn't take that much time at all. Once I'm done, I switch off the machine and then here you can see the 15 degree angle grind on our tungsten electrode. But for a better view, here's all three tungsten electrodes side by side so you can see the difference in their tapered appearance. On the very left, we have the tungsten electrode that was ground down with a 15 degree taper. The electrode in the middle was the one that had a 30 degree taper. And the one on the very right is the electrode that had the 45 degree taper. And that's pretty much it for using the Piranha 2 to grind your tungsten. Whichever angle taper you put on your tungsten electrode is going to be based on the application in which you're welding. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.